On today's show, rumors are flying everywhere that the Dallas Mavericks may do something or nothing at the trade deadline. If they do nothing, should we be upset? (sighs) The fan base will definitely be upset. (laughs) We'll talk about that. We'll talk about the rumors around Jalen Brunson, Dennis Schroeder, and Goran Dragic, and maybe Spencer Dinwiddie on today's Lockdown Mavs. I'm Luka Doncic, and this is Lockdown Mavericks Podcast. The Dallas Mavericks are NBA champions. don't believe you shouldn't be here and welcome you are locked on to the dallas mavericks my name is nick angstead media member and nba channel manager for the locked on podcast network thanks for making locked on mavs your first listen every single day we are free and available on all platforms including youtube where you can help us get it to ten thousand subscribers go subscribe like the video leave a comment answer the question below Joining me, as always, my co-host, contributor, writer at Mavs.com. The Rumor Wrangler, the one more thinking. What you got for me, Isaac Harris? The Rumor Wrangler. This is one of the best times of the year. I love it. uh, It's like the inside two weeks for the trade deadline. It's so much fun. It just all the rumors. Hook them up to your veins. Let's do this. All right. I got a question for you at the top. Okay. It's, It's kind of like a life. We haven't done a life advice for a long time and li- live stream thing you know, on youtube and all that so i got it i got a question for the comments this is gonna get really weird really quick but oh boy oh boy no so, <laughs> he did not tell me what this is before i didn't and i didn't it's kind of off the cuff here so work in a small office space okay you do. okay so i do and so pretty much everybody knows each other i do too okay. it's this room it's just me <laughs> you and your dog yeah so go to the bathroom the other day and in the stall somebody shows up next to me in the stall they don't know i'm there and they get really intense with their uh no <laughs> with their with their their time uh on the on the throne like really intense like before like, very, like before the lord like like, <laughs> like very uncomfortable and so i'm like we we all know each other right like so yeah in the mo- <laughs> and, you know there's the little cracks in the stalls as you're looking no. at so so then you can like, no, I'm saying like if somebody washed their hands, so then you can like see who's in there with them, but they obviously don't know that I'm there. So then what do I do? Nothing. Do I, Nothing. Do I just freeze and don't do anything? And then I have to wait for them to finish their time with the Lord on the throne there and, <laughs> and then wash their hands, leave and everything. Or do I like, if I'm like ready to go, I got to get back to work. Do I just like, all right, somebody else is in here, and I just go out and wash my hands, and then they're all freaked out. They're embarrassed. They probably see me. Then I might see. What do I do? Did was I okay? I froze. I didn't do anything. Did I do the right move? Is that? Yeah. Listen, you do what the Dallas Mavericks are about to do. <laughs> you keep that powder dry, Isaac Harris. You keep the powder dry. You don't. You don't do anything. You don't say anything. You keep what you got. You don't lose what you got. The anonymity, okay. you don't lose that, right? Because because th- then you don't want to. Because then you you only make it awkward by saying something, right? I was I was like scrolling on like Twitter and Instagram. I'm like, don't tap the button to where like the music plays. Don't don't hit. And I was like <laughs> so like scared in the moment because I was like, I can't let them know someone else is in here. And they don't took auto play a video. Don't auto play a video. <laughs> I know, I know. It was it was an intense moment for me. So so I'm glad that you shared this story because. The Are Mavericks, you? the Mavericks may do what Isaac Harris should have done and did do in the bathroom today. <laughs> they may do nothing. They may not make a move at the trade deadline. They may come out, and uh, we had a lot of reports come out today that say um, that the Mavericks may just stand pat and the Mavs may keep their team that they like their team. We heard from Mark Stein. We heard from Tim McMahon, uh, among others. And so we're going to go through all those rumors today. First one. Dallas doesn't want to trade Jalen Brunson or Dorian Finney-Smith. League sources say that there are no active trade discussions between the Mavericks and the Knicks for Jalen Brunson. Uh, and many have suggested the, you know, the trade of Brunson to the Knicks for the Mavs 2023 first round pick back, um, you know, to finish out the Porzingis trade. They have not even talked about that framework. So the Mavericks don't want to trade their guys. The, the deals that people have mentioned before have not happened. This is all via Mark Stein have not happened. And, the Mavericks may just stick with what they have and they keep trying to get 
you know, they keep poking around at a couple guys here and there. We've talked about all those rumors, but if they don't want to get rid of Brunson and Dorian Vinny Smith, the two guys that have trade value, they're probably not going to do anything big. It's such a, you know, obviously Mark Stein is Substack. Make sure you're, you know, subscribe yes, to that. It's a must subscribe right now. Pay the money. Yeah. You pay pay the money. Tim McMahon goes on a low post with, with Zach Lowe, talks Mavs. You know, and I think, you know, Zach Lowe the other day calling the Mavs his sneakily most interesting team yeah. at the trade deadline. He talks, you know, about that concept, you know, with, with Tim McMahon today of just like what direction they go. And I think that's the biggest biggest storyline around the Mavs right now is the how they feel about their team and are they confident enough in the team and how they've played over the past month that this is the team that they can carry into the playoffs and go past the first round. They've, we, we know they've lost the first round in the past two years. And on top of that, are you prepared to pay Jalen Brunson 18 and $20 million a year, maybe even a little more than that? Are you prepared to pay a Dorian Finney-Smith 13 million, 15 million a year potentially. Like, and if you are prepared to pay that, are you prepared to go into the next few years with this is your team? Like, this is your team of with Tim and KP and Luke on the Supermax, and then Brunson at like around 20 and Dorian at 50, and all these guys. Now Tim you're at 20. <laughs> yeah. Now you're at like 15, 20 million to the luxury tax for a team that you know, lost in the first round two years in a row. Like, what if, like, you have to ask yourself the what if question. What if they move past the deadline and they keep both the guys and then they go into the playoffs? What if they lose in the first round again? If they lose in the first round again, <clears throat> you turn back around a month later, it's free agency. You got to pay your guys because you can't just lose them for nothing. And then once you pay them, then you're locked in and paying into the luxury tax for a team that just lost in the first round three years in a row. And that's where, and, you know, obviously you can make some, you try to make some trades, but once again, like Tim wasn't playing very well. What's his trade value? If he's out for the rest of the year, what's his trade value of the summer? Chris Porzingis, what's his trade value of the summer? Like it, like, all, so it's just that this is the spot that Dallas is in right now. And it's a very, very unique, unique spot. The Mavericks can't lose those guys, right? They also, they also can't seem to replace those guys. with other, And yeah, with, with Dorian and, J- and Jalen Brunson, they have two guys to where you can't lose them. You just you really just can't. And then you also can't win. You, you may not be able to win with them. Now, maybe they go on some kind of Bengals run, and they're all of a sudden the team that nobody expected to get past the first round, second round, Luka, even, Joey, Joey. even into the third round. Yeah, right? Um Maybe they go on some kind of run like that, and then everything just justifies, right? Because winning solves everything. You see this the inverse yeah. with the Jazz. On that same podcast with Lowe and McMahon, they were talking about the Jazz, where they're losing right now, and there's a big gap between them and the Grizzlies and then the, the top two teams in the West. And everything's coming to a head. You know, all the stuff about Gobert and, and Donovan Mitchell, that's all starting to become real again because all the you know the turmoil and stuff between those guys because they're losing. Well, if the Mavs go on and win, then all of a sudden – like all this stuff doesn't doesn't necessarily matter. The Mavs go on a winning streak and everybody everybody feels good about it again. Yeah. The problem is, what if they do lose, right? And then you have to put the last couple of years into context. You have to say, okay, well, how many opportunities did they have? Isaac and I like to look at things in a va- like to look at deadlines, you know, uh, off seasons in a vacuum. We we look at it as, okay, what could they have done? What could they have done? What could they have done? Mm-hmm. And sometimes there's just no there's no viable real options. But then you have to look at the last couple years to say okay well can they do this again like can they spend three years of Luca's you know he's in his prime I guess right like he's his prime is gonna last a long time but he's in it can they spend three years like this with the exact same team is this team good enough to get where they want to go and uh you know the 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 questions they have about Dorian Finney-Smith and Brunson are big ones yeah and a lot of it has to do with how Luca feels right like I mean if if behind closed doors you know, Luca is if they are having these conversations with Luca and management and ownership, and if they're talking to Luca and it's like, hey, how do you feel about the team? You know, if if Luca's walking out saying, dude, we we are we are right there to be a finals team with this roster, it took Kawhi Leonard going supernova and we would have been in second round and like you know, all the stuff that we've heard a million times. So it's just I it's kind of pushing your chips in the middle if this team stays intact past the deadline it's kind of hey we're pushing our chips in because then it's like all right well you you're betting on this roster 
you're betting on this core, you're betting, you're going to pay it, you know, this summer, if they want to come back, like that's a whole angle of it too, which it looks like they do. That's something Tim McMahon talked about Jalen Brunson, how he wants to be in Dallas and all of that, but you're pushing your chips in and saying, we're going to win with this team. We think we are a good team and going through the playoffs. I think they'll have more pressure than any of it. They'll have more pressure in this first round than any of the first, any of the, you know, playoffs or the, since Luke has been in the league because you have to make it to the second round with the same core again. You have to. Yeah, they may have more pressure than like the Suns <laughs> because of the, the cap situation that they're in in the playoffs. So uh, coming up, let's get into Jalen Brunson. There was more report about Jalen Brunson's specific situation. We want to get into that and talk about what his decision and what the Mavericks decision with him means for this team going forward and for this trade deadline. We'll talk about all that coming up. But before we do, People think that you unusual circumstances means complicated taxes. I've had tons of interesting, weird situations with taxes. I'm sure you guys have. If you've done freelancing, had 1099s and W-2s and all kinds of different things. But for TurboTax Live experts, that's what makes things interesting. We have all had unique lives, especially over this pandemic, whether you're invested in crypto for the first time this year, you own an upcoming small business that was locked on that now became this incredible business, or you're raising rambunctious three-year-olds and a one-year-old trying to figure out what to do. Uh, luckily, TurboTax Live has experts who can help answer your tax questions, walk you through the whole process, do your taxes from start to finish. They can help you get every single deduction that you deserve no matter what. TurboTax Live experts are here to help you however you need. If you need an extra hand or you can hand your taxes off to you and they'll do it all. You can hand your taxes off to them and they'll do it all for you. TurboTax experts and interesting life can mean an even greater refund. Visit TurboTax.com to learn more. Do your thing. You've got your taxes. Into it, TurboTax live check it out also want to tell you about rockauto.com with ever increasing number of makes and models of cars it's impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need they need to keep their powder dry and figure out what kind of vehicles they can get off the lot but for rockauto.com they don't have to worry about that they can handle all kinds of different parts so save time and money using rockauto.com it's a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years if you would rather do you know work on your car yourself if you would rather be a Swanson, like from Parks and Rec, if you're one of those people, Rock Auto could be the best place for you. So go and explore their easy-to-use website today. It's rockauto.com. Again, go to rockauto.com right now. See all the parts available for your car or truck, right? Locked on in there. How did you hear about us box thing? Know that we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. All right, Isaac Harris. Thanks for making Lockdown Mavs your first listen every single day. Make sure you subscribe to the Lockdown NBA YouTube channel. We have an incredible trade deadline show for you. Hopefully the Mavs will do something, and then one of us will be on there, probably me, talking about it, breaking it all down. So check out Lockdown NBA on YouTube. All right, Isaac Harris. Um, a Rock Auto raid was just like getting back on a bike. We, haven't, we hadn't had them in a while, and I was like, oh, I know how to do this. <laughs> okay, Jalen Brunson is, the, is probably like the <laughs> – it's weird to say, like, so much of the Mavs' future relies on the decision that the Mavs make with Jalen Brunson. What do they do with him? What happens with him? Um, how does he play in the playoffs? There's so many different variables that that ha- what teams can pay him. There's so many different things. And Mark Stein wrote a good piece. Tim McMahon and, and Zach Lowe had a podcast talking about all the rumors and things around him. So we wanted to talk about it. Um, the thing I think that we learned today is that Jalen Brunson was able to be offered a contract extension at the end of last season, and the Mavericks did not firmly offer him this contract extension. Now, they were limited in what they could offer him, right? They could only offer him four years, $56 million. So if you're at home and you're sitting there doing some of the math, and you're like, okay, four years, 56, it's about $14 million a year. It's a pretty good deal. That's a pretty good deal. And if you think about it, this is not the Brunson of this year. This was the Brunson of last year that got played out of last year's playoffs. So take it as you will, but the Mavericks did not firmly offer that contract to Jalen Brunson. That tells you what, Isaac Harris? Yeah, I, I thought that was a little bit of news in the, you know, Tim McMahon drops that on the pod with Zach Lowe and about, you know, the timing of this contract thing because we know, you know, the most they can offer is the 456, you know, like you said, the 14 million a year. And, you know, that's basically be on the table all year. Like they would love for him to take it right now um, because he can take it. He can take it from right now. He could take it up through June if he wants to. That that's the most that they can offer. But that's not the number that we're all hearing about Brunson because 
the number we're hearing is 18, 20 million a year, 70 million over the course of the, you know, that contract, 75 million, you know, that's a lot more money because yeah, four years, so 18 is $72 million for the total length of the deal. So that's the, that's the difference right there is, you know, about $20 million total difference. Yeah. So when, when I heard Tim McMahon say that on that pod, the low post of, yeah, the Mavericks didn't firmly offer that contract extension after last year, but going into the season, I was like, Oh, okay. Okay. Because, because yeah, it, it just sets it up in, even if, <clears throat> even if it was on the tip, because he goes on to explain it, go listen to that podcast. Basically that, you know, Dallas is, you know, wanting to kind of keep their options open there. If, if they can make a bigger trade with somebody and all that different stuff, uh, another, you know, bigger star, but it, it was just such a unique thing in there because then just got my mind thinking of, okay, well, <clears throat> I mean, look how Brunson's played, you know, he's played so well this season. And cause he even alludes in that conversation with Zach Lowe of, if that offer was on the table, what, you know, Jalen, was he going to lean towards taking that? Because what if they did lock in Jalen at that number? And it's like, oh, what a bargain. Like he, if he, they it locked be in now. at that number, we would be wa- looking at this season and be like, that's a bargain. Like at imagine, 14. Imagine Jalen Brunson getting paid like $4 million less a year than Tim Hardaway Jr., right? That, I mean, that all of a sudden, yeah. if you put it in those terms, that's a huge bargain for the Mavs. So it's interesting. But you, you kind of look at it from the Mavs' point of view. And if it's the Jalen Brunson of last year, they got played yep. off in the playoffs. They couldn't play against the Clippers. And, you know, wasn't this this guy that we're seeing that can command an offense, that can be that secondary creator? Like, we weren't thinking he could be that guy even at the beginning of this season. But the guy has, has stepped up to his credit and has now squashed all those, those questions. But we do still have questions about the playoffs. If they play a team, you know, it's long and, and rangy and, and like that, is he going to struggle the same way he kind of has during this regular season? And so then if the Mavericks had given him this deal, then you're paying, you know, what you, you do some of the math there, like, <laughs> you know, the, uh, 30 something million dollars, almost, yeah, almost $40 million. No, yeah, math, 40 million, $30 million combined for Tim and Brunson to be off the bench guards that can't solve a lot of your problems, right? What, I mean, what do they do at that point? So they're, they're in a tough situation with that, but now it looks kind of dumb that they didn't offer that contract fully to him. Yeah. So, I mean, now he's going to get his money. It looks like, you know, that was something very clear from Mark Stein and Tim McMahon of Dallas wants him like, unless, you know, Tim McMahon had the, had the line in that pot of like, unless they're blown, you know, he had a direct quote, like basically blown out of water, you know, for a deal, then they, they want to keep Brunson. They want to pay him this summer. And, you know, Zach Lowe had the little line there, that pot of, Hey, you know, Dallas shouldn't get cute with the negotiations though. Basically saying, Hey, there's other teams waiting to hand him money. So if he's on the, you know, on this team past the deadline, then there is a Dallas has to be prepared to pay him. And it looks like they're excited to pair him with Luca moving forward. If he, if he is obviously on the, on the team pass. The there's team. a, cu- there's a couple reasons to feel optimistic about this situation though. Um, who can offer Brunson? Well, first of all, the Mavericks would have Brunson's bird rights. So the Mavericks can, mm-hmm. this is a situation we've talked about this before where the Mavericks can actually go into the luxury tax to re-sign Jalen Brunson to whatever number that they want, right? <laughs> they can pay Jalen Brunson probably more than anybody else can because there's not a lot of teams that can create enough cap space this off season to offer the same amount of money that the Mavericks could offer him. So if they get in some kind of bidding war where Brunson is like, hey, I'm getting this from this team, the Mavericks can match it. Right, right, right now though, right now. What, what's that conversation look like? Let's just say, for instance, before the 10th, New York sheds 20 million what? to OKC. How? And puts it. <laughs> it's no, I'm saying 20. OKC is like $20 million under the cap. What team before the 10th? Oh, the Thunder. Get? The Thunder could. He's not. I, I'm no, not. No, no, I'm not worried I'm, about teams like the Thunder. No, no, I'm not saying. Um, I'm saying what team right now is going to shed money to OKC to create cap space for yeah. this summer? That's the team that we're going to be talking about on the 11th of, oh, okay. New York just made a trade on you know February 9th to ship out two players to OKC and attach a first to it. And now they've created 23 million in cap space. Jeez, wonder who they're going to go after. And then we're all like, holy crap. Now we know it's going to like, that's a situation like right now. Yeah. We're looking around saying who has cap space, but that could, that could change over the next week and a half. Sure, it could change. But the teams that have been connected to him, you know, Detroit uh, ha- is going to have cap space, but they, they don't even have, you know, that much this offseason. And then they, they're not really willing to, you know, say if they really are going to go after Brunson, according to Mark Stein. And then the Knicks, 
they'd have to really create some space. They'd really have to go out, go out of their way. Uh, they have $120 million in cap in, in uh, salaries next year. Like that's a lot of, that's a lot that they oh, have yeah. to move around. It would have to be like, you know, all of Julius Randle or Evan Fournier plus another player. Plus, I mean, it's not just like offloading one player that they could do. So they'd have to make some actual moves. So I'm saying that's a reason to be optimistic is it would be hard for another team to, you know, poach Brunson, right? This is not some easy yeah. thing that's going to come in. Some other things would have to happen. And the Mavs would probably be tipped off by it and, and see that. And then that tells them even more that they shouldn't mess around with this. So, And, and it would be hard for, it's going to be hard for a team. If a trade, if a team wants to go trade for Brunson right now, it's going to be hard for that team to do that because Brunson makes $1.8 million right now. Yeah. And if you're Dallas and you are going to at least listen to a Brunson trade offer, it's going to be an offer that sends back a quality dang player that's going to be starting for you and putting up buckets for you. And not many, not many players around the league make that amount of money. And the guys that you would typically attach to Brunson in this scenario to create that money is not even playing right now. Like, or to match those salaries, like Tim yeah. Hardaway's money. He's not playing right now. So like it, it would be kind of like, I do think it's very, very slim that Brunson is traded before the deadline because of all the, I do think Dallas wants to keep him. I, he has a great relationship, with Luca, all that stuff. But I also think it'd be really hard for them them to trade him also and to get a very meaningful guy back, unless unless they, you know, went down the the KP route and all that. Coming up, there's some other players mentioned around the rumors around the Mavericks. Dennis Schroeder, Goran Dragic, even Spencer Dinwiddie's name was mentioned, kind of in relation to the Mavericks, kind of not. But we'll talk about those guys coming up and what they can bring to the Mavericks. We'll talk about that coming up. But before we do. There might be less football being played by teams like the Ravens, the Titans, the Raiders, the Cowboys. But BetOnline.net has way more odds and info for this playoff season. From scores, totals, player props, to where the next coach fired is going to land. Check out BetOnline. It's the number one spot for all things NFL betting in 2022. It's not just football. BetOnline.net. Basketball. Hockey, boxing, and UFC, they have the best odds and coverage and the best in the business. From sports downright down to your favorite Vegas casino games. Bet Online is your number one online gambling wager destination. Bet Online, the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports and play your favorite games. Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, Isaac Harris, let's talk about some of these other names because this is the fun, this is kind of the fun part. So, Mark Stein also talked about Goran Dragic. This is the name that we've just been sitting here waiting for almost the entire season, ever since Dragic got traded, I think. Quote, it is believed that Dragic will be bought out by the team that acquires him. So they're thinking that the Raptors are going to come up with some kind of trade, but that the, that the party that trades for him will buy him out. Sources say that multiple teams are expected to pursue Dragic if he indeed lands on the buyout market as widely anticipated. So the Mavericks are going to have some competition for him. This is not a, oh, yeah. you know, in the, in the bag all right, Dragic gets bought out. The Mavericks will be the number. They're probably the number one team, but they may not be uh, his only suitor. I mean, they're they're the they're probably the number one team just because of Luca, right? I mean, because there's going to be better teams that's probably going to become like that's going to come calling for him. Like Brooklyn would probably come calling for him. The you know Philly would probably come like every team's going to come calling for him. You know, with a minimum contract. You know, Milwaukee. Like, yeah, and everybody can use to go on Dragic off the bench and to get it for that cheap to say, hey, a vet who can get some buckets and play, give me, you know, 15, 20 minutes a night and you could trust him to run the offense. Like, let's do it. So they're definitely going to have the competition. It's just can the Luca Igor connection, you know, reel, reel him in. And uh, my, my thing is, I'm very curious of how the fan base right now would feel if if they just walked out of this deadline no trades and they had they had Dragic you know off a buyout how would the fan base feel how would the momentum going you know into this last stretch of the season all of that it'd still be exciting it'd still be you know Dragic adding Dragic to this would be awesome Right. I mean, yeah, they, be, they definitely have a ad. spot for him. They, they need offense. Like it's not a you're forcing the fit, you know, type of thing and because it's Lucas friend. Like there's a clear spot for Dragic on this, like in this rotation right now that he would step in and, and feel. 
Yeah, I mean, you look at it would be the same thing as last year, right? The Mavericks make the trade for a J.J. Redick, and that's kind of the only thing that they did. It'd be like almost the exact the exact same situation where they just keep the same team and then they add, you know, an older guard that may be able to help them on offense. And uh, with the J.J. Redick situation, it didn't really happen like that. He wasn't able to, to help because he wasn't he wasn't healthy. He only ended up playing 13 games for the Mavs there at the end. Um, he did shoot 39% from three, which is, you know. This podcast is great. <laughs> this podcast is good. Um, but yeah, if, if Dragic was the only ad, it would be a solid ad, but it's not, I don't, I'm not sure how much it's moving the needle, um, but it would be, it would be a positive move for, you know, for the Mavericks. All the talk we had yesterday after the Orlando loss, Dragic helps some of that. He helps some of those situations where all they do is just take open threes at the end of, <laughs> the, end of the game yeah. and they don't have anybody else to turn to. It, it would, it would move the needle a, a, a tad for me. It would give me a little bit more confidence going into a playoff series. It's like knowing... in your gas tank. It's not like the okay. So you have the the empty. You have the half court. You know, half quarters a little smaller, but the eighth ones are like even smaller than that. It would tick up like that. It wouldn't go. You know, a quarter of a gallon. It would just go like a little tick up. Yeah, that that that's how it would be for me. Because going knowing that they would have somebody else come off the bench and give them some offense stuff into a series that would make me feel a lot better. And yeah, but yeah. Anyway, I was kind of surprised about the Dennis Schroeder news, though. The other news mentioned was Dennis Schroeder. According to Mark Stein, Dallas is exploring potential roster upgrades through this route, adding Schroeder and trading him into the the traded player exception that they got in the Josh Richardson trade. But, um, But according to Mark Stein, this is not in the club's plans. The Mavs are not planning on trading... De- you know, for Dennis Schroeder by using this trade exception. Now you could take that in a bunch of different ways, right? Yeah. You could take that and it's not in the plans to, to use the trade exception because they have a huge trade for Jalen Brown and they're also bringing in Dennis Schroeder and they're also going to do a huge trade where they get both of those guys and they don't need the player ex- traded player exception because they already have this huge plan ready. It's a pipe dream. we got it going on. You could take it that way or you could just say they don't want Schroeder. They don't like him. They have intel from, you know, all the German connections they have. Maxi was like, hey, no, I don't, don't want to play with this guy. This would be this would be Rondo 2.0. Like, <laughs> I feel like somebody DM'd us that. I think, so. I think I think, yeah, one of our German listeners DM'd us that he thought that it would be like that. I don't I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know enough about Schroeder, but uh, he would be some kind of, he would be a kind of a mercenary. And those guys can be hit or miss, you know, he's going for a big contract. He missed out on a big contract this off season because he didn't take that deal from the Lakers. And so would he be ready to play a role? The Mavericks would have, would ask him to play, or would he just want to go in there and say, Hey, it's Dennis Schroeder time. <laughs> like, it, it's, it's time. You guys traded for me. I'm, I'm the guy that comes in and I'm going to prove to everybody. You I'm got worth, time to get something to eat. <laughs> I'm worth, I'm worth that $80 million deal. Um, uh, yeah, this one, well, like you said, you could take your different, you know, different directions. Stein saying it's not in the club's plans. You know, you could take that as like, hey, they're not proactively pursuing this. But if it's last hour and they've done nothing and everything else they've talked about has, you know, fallen through, and they're like, okay, this you mean would be we the could, JJ Redick move. <laughs> you mean we could send a, you know, top fifty protected, you know, pick, you yeah, know, right. to to Boston and just throw Dennis into this, you know, exception, and we at least have a guy we could bring out there, like. I I don't see the harm in that unless there is some type of like personality, you know, all of that. And, Cause it's not even, even the reporting around shooter. It's not, man, they're asking price, you know, it's just kind of out there. Yeah. It's like, we haven't seen any of that. It looks like they're just going to try to find somebody just to take him for free. The other news I found interesting. It was not necessarily connected to the Mavs was Kevin O'Connor from the ringer had a big piece about the Clippers and the Clippers trying to figure out what to do around their guard spot. And, uh, you know, what should they do with Paul Stay George? Stay away from Brunson. <laughs> yeah. He mentioned, I can't see him in a Clippers jersey. He mentioned Brunson in there. And then he mentioned Kawhi maybe coming back at the end of the season. But, you know, what should they do? The Clippers have no reason to tank. But he mentioned Spencer Dinwiddie as a possible point guard for them. And this is the line in there. And <laughs> a great line from Kevin O'Connor. The Wizards want to move Dinwiddie because he looks like a shell of his former self and his teammates don't want him there. I'm not sure you could put it any more bluntly than that, right? Like, I think hey. that's, I think that's as blunt as you can go. We talked a lot about Spencer Dinwiddie this off season. Has your opinion about him changed at all this year? I mean, it has a little bit. I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm some, you know, wizard guru uh, that I've watched, you know, 24 uh, games of of the Wizards. I know more about Gandalf than I do uh, about Gafford. You know, what? <laughs> um, what? You know, out of time. You know more about Gafford or Gandalf. But um, 
but no, I, I think it is, you know, you look at his numbers across the board, shooting 38% from the field, um, which, you know, that's bad. It's not yeah, good. He's not, not shooting good. the ball. Well, <laughs> he's not fitting in. Well, he started 40 games for this wizards team and the wizards team has taken a real downturn right now. Just um, 13 points a game, 31% from three. And, you know, he signed that, you know, contract, like you said, with him. He makes 18 this year. He makes, um, how did it cross? Yeah, no, he, he makes 17 this year, 18, 18 next, next year, 18.8 the year after that. So I don't, I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know. Yeah. This would have been a deal where you were like, if the Mavericks were just, they like, okay, well, I don't think Tim Hardaway can be part of this team, this new Mavericks team, right? He could have been part of the, the, the way the Mavericks team had been under Rick Carlisle, but under Jason Kidd, we don't think Tim Hardaway Jr. can be this. This is maybe a, you know, let's just trade one for one and see what happens with, with when we flip these two guys. But now that Tim Hardaway Jr. is hurt, I don't, I don't see a situation where they can make a deal like this work unless – they just go with the whole Porzingis trade. Is, can the Wizards? The Wizards have a bunch of dudes. Can they put together some kind of deal? And with the Mavericks, you know, talk about something like that. That's one where that is kind of interesting. But yeah, would the Wizards be up for that? They would be a team. Yeah, like if you if Dallas did listen to offers Porzingis for Porzingis before the deadline, the Wizards are a sneaky team that I would I would watch for it because. They have all these guys and all these different contracts, even like Bertans, you know, all of yeah. these dudes that if they wanted to piece together and they have a deep rotation, they want to piece together two or three of these guys and say, hey, we want to pursue a guy, a Gordon Hayward, a Christoph Porzingis, a CJ McCaw, like as somebody that makes a lot of money and that you could say, hey, let's bring in another guy, you know, to, you know, put, put beside Bradley Beal and all of this, like, that's a you know that's a team that could do it and it would make sense for them too i think yeah so that's something that's something to watch out for but that's where the mavericks are and it's not super it's not super fun but it is really fascinating and the future of the mavericks kind of depends on these next couple of weeks so stick with us we'll be breaking it all down all the rumors and news we'll talk about dorian and brunson a lot the mavericks decision on that we'll break down uh the mavericks games coming up this week the mavericks have a couple games they home for the thunder on Wednesday and then home for the Sixers on Friday. We'll have post game pods for you there. Thanks for making Lockdown Maps your first listen every day. And also check out Bet Lockdown Bets for your next lesson. Guys, thanks so much for listening to Lockdown Maps. Peace out. Boom.